Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Odetta Pine. She's the founder and CEO at G7 Tech Services. Odetta, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. Nice being on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I, I think what you guys are doing at G7 is actually really innovative and cool. But maybe before we get into that, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Absolutely. Well, I grew up in a very small little town of Albania. Okay. Um, I'm sure a lot of people don't know where it is at because it's just so small and poor and no one really knows. It's just, uh, you know, next to Italy and Greece uh, in a very small town on the mountain. So the snow Sounds beautiful, and hiking it is beautiful. It is. It is very beautiful, but very, very cold, and that's why the re- why, one of the reasons why um I moved to Austin because gotcha. it's nice and warm. Okay, so <laughs> you went to university. What did you take, and why? So I did um, major in computer science, information information technology, and management, and I was four classes off to getting my finance major, and. Uh, the reason why it was very simple because I was good in math and okay. uh, it's just coding and numbers and databases and everything just came naturally to me, which meant that one, it was easier for me to keep that scholarship I was on. Okay. Uh, cool. And two, I didn't have to read. I didn't, I didn't really have to read a lot, you know, and do a lot of, I had to do the homework, but I didn't have to study hard to get where I needed to be and uh, and work at the same time because I did work full time and took five classes each semester and graduated earlier. Uh, Very cool. At Simmons College in Boston. So yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, what made you want to go into computer science? Um, so funny story. So I went to a um, private Catholic school, very strict, and okay. um, you know I I was always. Tutored. I had a math tutor and physics tutor okay. because I competed in, in mathematics and physics wow. um, competitions at a local level in my hometown, but also national and also placed second and third. Okay. And okay. Uh, one of the classes we took, so in high school, the way it works there is that you kind of branch out, you take a test to get in, and then you kind of branch out, branch out in sciences and kind of literature, history and all that. And you know, I was into science because I scored highest on the test and I placed myself first to get into the school. So that's what I chose. And it just happened to be that at that point, we had a computer science class. Um, okay. And this is very new. I mean, you have to imagine like Albania is very old in technology. So I did work with Windows 3.1. Oh, wow. Okay? Yeah, very and old. And so <laughs> very, very old. So, you know, the, the, the teacher who, who taught, the professor who taught actually the, the computer science class, um, he just gave me the, the, the laptop, the computer, actually no laptop, it was, a, it, was, it was a computer, a PC, and he gave it to me and I just got on it and I did MS-DOS and it was just naturally came. And uh, I did not know that that was kind of my strength back then because we didn't do a lot, ton- we didn't do any coding actually, as a matter of fact, but the, the tutor, the, the professor who taught the class, um, he recommended it when I graduated from high school and, um, I thought that was kind of interesting. So I was like, sure, why not? So that's, that's why. <laughs> no, very cool. I, I um, think that's awesome. Yes. That's great. <laughs> that's why. So didn't really know computer science and what it actually really meant okay. up until I got into college and it just naturally came and the classes that I had to take and everything, it was just easy. And I just, it just kind of fell all into place. So as a matter of fact, you know, it was the, the professor or the teacher who told that class for me in, in high school that kind of pushed me to, to go for computer science. And then, you know, I, I got into information technology because it was very related together. Sure. And then I thought, well, since I like the, you know, the accounting, because I took an accounting class as an elective, I believe it was. I was right. like, well, since I really like this and I did good, I got A's. I was like, maybe I should just kind of explore a little bit the management piece in the business. 
but without knowing or you know that kind of eventually down the road this will be a great asset for me to have right uh, all of the combination of the, the the business and also the 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 computer science and technology so yeah that's, no, that's kind of very the, cool the history there so walk me through your journey up until G7 and what made you actually found a company? So that's okay. So this is, <laughs> mm -hmm. I will start with my background and how I grew up, right? Um, I grew up in Albania. We were very, very poor. Um, okay. My parents were both doctors. My dad's the smartest man I know and the the guy who pushed me and the reason why I'm here where I'm at right now. Um, oh, very cool. Would so be going through that tough. We went through a very bad civil war in '97, and it was. I mean, it was it was bad. From kids being kidnapped, prostitution, yeah, poverty, no government, all of that. And who was flying through the windows? I promised myself. I said, I'm gonna go and make a better life for my kids and for my family and for my mom and my dad. And my mom and my dad were both doctors, but you know they make. 500 bucks, 200 bucks a month, okay, which is as doctors over there compared to here. So we always struggled um, growing up, and my dad was never home because he had to get multiple jobs to provide for us and all that. So wow. long story short, I said, I, I'm going to create a better life for them, uh, which is a matter of fact, I just got them here on November. Oh, well, congrats. That's um, awesome. Yeah, fully legally and all the people were done and everything. Um, and it took some time, but it's okay. And, um, you know, I promise I said, I'm getting them here. I'm giving them a better life. I'm giving them something that they deserve to have, which they never did. Right. Sure. And, um, and secondly, I said, I'm, I want to build something that um, it's better and help other people as well. It, it's better for my kids. Um, for my family, for my friends, and you know, it just kind of helps women and makes them believe in themselves that they can do it, even though the industry they might be in or the dream that they might have going after, other people look at it and say, oh, she will never do it. Oh, she's so weak. Oh, she's just a girl at the end of the day. Oh, she's pretty, but not smart. Oh yeah, she's smart, but she's ugly, right? So that's the reason why. Um, that's the reason why that's the reason it was a dream and um, I promised myself I'm going to go and follow it and um, cool. you know I'm, I'm living it I'm living it and um, I it feels great no that's that's awesome so what exactly is G7 Tech Services and why did you start or decide to start it up so I so I, I worked with a startup, okay, and um, I put okay. all my passion and my skills and my love into this startup company um, okay. for which I worked, I believe, for eight going nine years, okay? Uh -huh. And um, they just, it was a very, you know, male-dominated company. Um, sure. it's, as a woman, you don't get to progress and with the skills you have and get to, to that level, right? And sure. um, I was just, I, w I was just tired of it. I said, I have a dream. Uh, I'm trying to work this with you guys. I've given you all of my passion, all of my love. I've given you all of my skills, my math, my business skills, everything. I've done everything for all your clients. You know, you guys are not trying to help out and, and get me there. Right. So I said, I, you know, I'm bored. Um, I tried talking to them. I, you know, tried to figure things out. It just wasn't going anywhere. And I said, you know, at this point, I just got to go and follow my dreams. And um, the most important thing that made me do this, besides this, you know, this one reason was the fact that I believed in my skills. I had a good skill and I followed it and sure. I believed in it. And what that skill was, was the ability to understand complex math, which comes a lot, Andy, with predictive and statistical analytics and all that. And the ability to to understand that and translate that into a business language that the actual users can actually understand. And when you combine, when you combine those, those skills together, uh, you create this product and this, this algorithms that if you Kevin look at it and come to the office and open your laptop day by day, you're happy to do it. You understand it. Point and click, easy, simple, you get it. Right. right? Yep. 
the language of ones and zeros in computer science, it's not ones and zeros anymore. It's something you actually are happy to open up your laptop when you start your day, be happy, do your work. Instead of taking you weeks to do it, you're doing it one day and you just love it and you're happy and you have more life to spend, you know, at your, with your family and focus on other stuff to improve your company, yourself, whatever that is that makes you happy on day to day basis. And, you know, in today's industry, especially like the software, you can either get one or the other. So what I mean by that is you can either get a consultant or a company or whatever you want to call it that it's really good in math, but it's lacking that ability to translate into business. And then you or you also get the other business, very good business people, but they don't have the technical skills and they can't understand the math, right? So you either get or, you, you know, the cases are you get one or the other. You can't, it's very, very rare you get someone that can't understand, especially advanced math, but also be so good at business and have the people skills. And that's right. what I believed in. And that's what I had. And, um, I, you know, I took that and I said, well, I'm going to do what I love doing, which is, you know, math and helping people out and improving their lives. And that's, that's what I did. And also getting to my dream, right? Sure. No, that's awesome. That That's great. But, so, yeah. So what, how did you actually come up with the idea though? And then what are you guys building now at G7 Tech? So the, the idea, so how it came up, um, I worked with many clients, okay. right? At, the, at my other job, I'm talking big clients like Sephora, Nike and all this. And I figured out a pattern and I figured out a problem, right? right. Yep. And that was a problem that I could fix. So there was a gap. So I took that and I said, hey, when there is a gap, you fill it in, sure. right? And when there's a gap, there's money to be made. And, and that, that, was, that was the idea that I got. And um, what we're working right now, um, as far as G7 goes, is we're working on different um, products and applications okay. that um, in, they've included, they're, they're part of in five different areas. So you've got financial planning and anal analysis, supply chain and demand, predictive analytics, um, sales analysis and reporting, and also operational reporting. Um, so essentially what we're doing with all this app, depending on what the customer need is, is we're looking, and this is purely looking at the data, figuring out the pattern and building something to help them out, figure out the problems and fix them. Okay. And this is sure. strictly by looking at the data. Okay. So you're building and, custom solutions based on their data or you have a software suite or how does that work? We're building custom solutions. Yes. Okay. And uh, we're building those using, eventually I'll have my own product uh, right. at some point, you know, in, in this startup world that just started the, the past year. But for right now we have different solutions uh, that we're building customized using different tools. Right. Gotcha. Um, and depending on and as, as we're, we're coming as a tr as a trusted partner with this companies where we bring uh, we bring on a lot of experience, 21 plus years of experience in the industry. Right. Data right. analytics um, and then business intelligence, corporate performance management. So uh, with that in our hand, we come in as a trusted partner that any company can say, wow, like they can pick up the phone call, call Nike or call whoever they want to call, get a reference um, about us and there will be no problem. Um, oh, very cool. Okay, because of the, the work we've done. And that's not just with Justin, that's also with all of my prior um, work that I've done with my prior company. Sure. So, I, so I'm, yep. I'm, I'm curious, without giving away exactly what you built for you know a specific client or whatnot, can you give us some types of examples of solutions you've built or or things that you've built to solve a problem yep so um you must i mean you i'm sure you must have heard about all of the excel world yep. microsoft excel world yep. and specifically i'm going to touch on a little bit on the budgeting and planning right sure and you've got companies over there they're multi-million or even some of these billion dollars that are yeah, running yeah. into excel are running their business in excel spreadsheets yeah. right which seems crazy well but... <laughs> that's that's yes but it's very true uh yep. and i'm you know it's very true especially in the banking industry it is uh and one of the other reasons why in banking is extremely crazy is because they're so traditional, right? right. Uh, like very, very traditional uh, for years and years and years. And, you know, you got someone who's uh, 
at, at a certain age that, you know, 65 years old and they're still printing and, and all this. And, you know, we, we come in and it's like you can't run a company on a pen and a paper anymore. You can't run the company on Excel spreadsheet anymore, right? Sure. This Excel spreadsheets are just slow. They break. Uh, you can't train anyone on a billion spreadsheets that all of your 20 plus entities run under. Right. So we come in and we just kind of get all in one solution for them where with a few clicks and a, you know, depending on how big the company is in, in, in a month or less than a month in a couple of days, you, you have your budgets, right? You have your sales analysis. I mean, you can see what, you know, branch manager at branch a is doing and performing where he's failing and, and why, right? I mean, wh- what are we doing wrong here? And you can act right on the fly uh, and make decisions right on the fly to improve the business, but also make people happier that work for you. Sure. Uh, have transparency, have one version of the truth all in one. Yeah, no, fair enough. I think I remember reading an article a number of years ago that there was a bank somewhere in America that was running or had all their mortgages separated by like each Excel file was a different letter of the alphabet and a bunch of them <laughs> yeah. got corrupted and the backups were corrupted and they just lost a bunch of Excel files that had people's mortgages and they went out to people and said, how much do you owe on your mortgage? And people were literally like, if you don't know, I'm not paying you another nickel. So they lost a ton of money, right? Exactly. Exactly. So preparing people to get to the next level and keep themselves up to date with everything that's going on, it's key for G7. And it's in a trusted, honest way. Sure. Based oh. on experience that we've done and based on experience we have and also the ability to look at what's actually happening with your data. I mean, a lot of people do not know what type of data they have, where the data is sitting, how many systems they have, and the ability to come in and say, hey, you got all your data sits on all these 10 different systems, but right. you have it into one. And here is how your operations look like. Well, here is how your financial stuff look like, looks like. Here is how your budgeting looks like. You're over, under budget. If you keep up this way, you're going to break. You're not going to you know, keep making your profits. You're going to go under. As well as, you know, in the case of the banks, where you're looking at members' data, try to figure out pattern and behaviors, right? And sure. you, you target your marketing and you, you target your sales you, you, based on what the people's behavior is, right? It's all about people and it's all about how they behave, which is, all it which is proven from data all around us in every second we talk even now that we're talking there's data that you people can analyze and make decisions on sure you guys also or you mentioned also a couple other uh verticals that you guys build software in. do you maybe want to talk about uh maybe or and give maybe a quick example about each one of them just so people fully understand what what you guys do in the different spaces Yes. So one of the the very interesting uh, verticals, to be honest with you, is um, energy, energy and utilities. Right. And um, I'm working actually, and I don't mind talking about, you know, some of my clients because we're making case study now. But one of my biggest clients is in Jamaica. Uh, They're the JPS. Yep. Uh, They're the only energy provider in the whole island of Jamaica. Okay. And um, I'm helping these guys out with one, their cost. Okay. okay. And what I mean by cost is from head counter and expenses um, all the way down to kind of the sales side of it, uh, the whole budgeting and planning process, including payroll, right? Uh, okay. Down very detailed down to their, all of their unions and so on and so forth. Um, that's a big thing that I'm helping them out as well as on top of that, um, we're exploring some of the operational reporting, um, you know, for all of their different offices and departments to make sure that um, we're, you know, we're, we're tight on costs, but also we're, you know, we're giving back to the community and helping out uh, improve the Jamaican lives um, in the island. Very so cool. That's, uh, yeah, it's very, very neat. Uh, they're great people to work with, great culture, and great food. Ho- hopefully you get um, to I go, go there every month. There. I was going to say, hopefully you get to go I there. I go there every month. Home. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yes, I go there every month for a week, and, and I love, love, love going down there. 
Um, I love working with everyone there. It's, it's just a very nice, warming, uh, feel at home type of culture for very, me. Very cool. So, uh, um, and you guys also play in the healthcare healthcare space as well, correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. And um, the healthcare space, what we mainly do, like I said, like I mentioned earlier about the banks, it's kind of the the patient uh, uh, okay. profiles, gotcha. right? Yeah. And kind of how long it takes from the time Kevin gets into my clinic, right? Right. To the time for, for either to get diagnosed or checked out, whatever the type of visit is, all the way until the end when, when he's out of the clinic, right? Sure. So you get into a lot of kind of um, where is the time that I'm spending the most and why, right? Well, Kevin, based on certain goals, Kevin should come in at eight o'clock and depending on what he's in, should be out by nine. But guess right. what? He's out by 10. Well, why? Okay. Right. Sure. Uh, which helps, you know, the, the clinics kind of with, you know, their, uh, but how, how do they manage traffic, right? How many people they need to employ, how many doctors uh, or dentists or whatever the case is. Um, and then on top of that as well, we do some of the budgeting and planning, right? Because if you're a clinic, a doctor's clinic, obviously, you, you know, you have the demand of the patients, but you also need a lot of supplies and all that. So you kind of have to budget for that, right? Right. And make sure that everyone gets paid, everyone comes in on time, and you're providing the best service you can provide out there. Oh, very um, cool. So, but yeah, no, I, I, I think that's, that's awesome. And it's interesting. Uh, yeah. Like I just, as we were talking, I'm thinking there's a, probably a bunch of really interesting data tools that you could build to sell as a monthly subscription kind of a SaaS business, but you know, and you'll get there that I think that's, that's also kind of an interesting vertical that you guys could play in eventually if you're open to that as, and you kind of mentioned you eventually you'll build your own software product. I think that's that's actually really cool. Absolutely, and uh, I think that's you know kind of where this is going going towards. You know, and I I read and I learn every day. If right. I don't read, you know, it's um, I have to get up and read. What what are the trends? What what are people you know having trouble with? I mean, uh, there's so many tools, BI and corporate performance and all of this. But you know what? They all have different gaps. Sure. Right. Different niches, different problems. So in my head, as I read and I go through, even with my clients and I learn and you get to talk to people. Right. I don't just talk to CIOs and CFOs. And to be honest with you, talking to the people who do their jobs is where I learn the most. Sure. Because I want my product. I want those people to define my product. I don't want to create a product just because Tableau has or Microsoft has and all this. I want to create a product that my clients define and that's my goal and that's why I'm you know I'm taking my time I'm going I'm learning um I'm going through the you know the the hustling of all the startup to get to that point where I have something that's good and it makes people happy on their day-to-day jobs and that's that's the goal no very cool so and to me oh, it's go ahead. quality versus quantity uh, which is very, very key to me. And, you know, if you have a product that's very going to does one thing very well, then that's where it's at, right? And it sure. fills so many gaps that are currently existing on many other tools. No, very cool. I, I think that's that's awesome. So when you and I talked before we started recording, obviously you're a female in a male-dominated industry. I really want to talk to you about what do you see and what are the challenges that you've seen and overcome because you're obviously running a successful company and you you decided to go for it so how do you try to inspire other women to follow their dreams and passion whether they're in tech or not so that's that's a great question um i'll start with what are kind of the the two main uh, hard things of steps, right? That that I run against every every day. Sure. There's two. The main one is you either are beautiful and that's it, right? Okay. And you walk into these meetings and trying to get people to to hire you, and they're like, "Oh, she's very pretty," right? And that's the first you you can you can tell right when you look at those guys and they're they're 
they're checking you out, right? They're, they're, and that's it. That's it. Uh, okay. Well, and, you know, and two, you either are smart, but you're ugly, right? So okay. for me, when I, when I walk into these places, I, I, I always put dresses on and heels. Okay. okay? Yep. I'm a female. I, I want to look good. I, you know, a dress. I will never put pants on okay. or slacks or anything like that. Y- even so Well, I guess thing, in Austin, it's never cold, but like, even if you're in a it's cold never climate. Cold. Yeah, there's okay. tights. That's why you have tights. So you okay, put tights on enough. or you put boots with heels. So okay. that's one of my main things. And, you know, when I walk into the room, I own the room, uh, meaning I open my mouth and I get up and draw on the whiteboard to explain wh- why I'm here for and what can I do for them. I give them facts. Okay. Right. You give them facts to convince them in a way that, hey, I'm not just beautiful and address some heels. I'm more than that. And this is why you need to hire me. And those are the facts. So the data. I know my data. I know your business. I, I know what you guys, you know, what you guys are missing and what you guys need. And I can give you that because of this fact and that and that and that. So you walk in confident and you are honest and genuine and you just sell yourself to the skill that you believe in yourself. Right. So you sure. sell you, you ha- in my case, I know what my skill is and this is why they're hiring me. This is why I'm going to get their money. No, I, I think that's really good advice, but what do you say to people that aren't confident in themselves, right? Because I think uh, like that strategy I've heard from a number of women seems to work really well, but I've also heard that some women just aren't there yet in the confidence level to go into a boardroom, get up in front of people, start drawing on the whiteboard and, and doing this kind of stuff. How did you overcome that? Did you always kind of have that? Or, or what are your thoughts around that? Um, so I, no, I didn't always have that. Okay. Um, but what I did was I surrounded myself always with people that had that, Ah, always with people that pushed me always with people that said, yes, you can do it. Even if it's the craziest idea, yes, you can do it and go for it. And even if you fail, then big deal, move on to the next one. Don't make the same mistake twice. So you surround yourself and I'll say women that lifts you up in every aspect of your life. For me, in order to have a business, I have to be 150%, 200% every day Sure. from two aspects, personal and also, you know, like family, work, you know, feeling good about yourself, working out, you know, going and having coffee with someone that knows more than I do, with someone that you can learn from, Right. You've got to surround yourself with people that lift you up, are positive, and you can always learn from. Not only in business, but also in personal life as well. Because when you combine the business and the personal, and they're both at 100%, then you got 200% in you. And you can walk into that room, no matter who who is in there, and say, guess what? You, you, I have your money, and you're buying from me, no matter what, because you need it, because you know I'm the best. No, I, I think that's that's really good advice. But but I'm curious to know how like how do you see the ch- the change of women becoming more and more into the industry and, and actually getting the respect that they've deserved for like it, I guess the point I'm trying to make is it's sad that we're even having this conversation that Anybody is discriminated against for whatever reason, right? And it's crazy to me, the gender thing, the race thing, I I never understood it. So it's kind of sad that we have to have a conversation about like how to overcome something that shouldn't be an issue, right? Do you know what I'm getting at? Um, yeah, it's sad we, you know, we talk about this issue and we have to, to go through this topic, but it, it, you know, it happens so much, right. Especially in the, in, in the software industry. And it always comes down to, well, how do, how, how do you overcome that? Right. When you see that it's happening right there, right then. And the, the answer to that is you, 
you ignore the issue in a confident way uh, or you, you pretend the issue is not there and you, you hold yourself to that goal that you have, right? And Okay. Um, you you never back down from your goals and anything is possible right you can't doubt your 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 own potential sure. your your own skills right and you never you you can't hide in in hesitation right um and you you have to choose who you want to be you have to choose your own direction and you know plot that course that when you, you want to go after right where you can find a new beginning a new customer a you know tap inside that that inner inner force that you have because at the end of the day anything can be possible right if you have the will the hope you go after the the motivation you the goodwill you go after the things you want to do and you have your you, know, you believe in your own potential skills and anything is possible you know overcoming this issue is possible but you got to do it with with energy and you've got to be strong on pursuing your goals and no matter what comes your way you you just you know you you just go with it you go even if you when you don't know you just go with it like even if someone throws you a you know situate throws you in a situation or throws a problem at you that you don't know or throws an opportunity that you don't know how to, to do it uh, or a job or whatever it is, you just take it and you run with it and you go figure it out. And people see that when, when you're that kind of person, when you walk into that room, they see that. They see that light shine bright and they see that confidence and they see that energy and they see that passion and love and honesty. And people will trust you right away as soon as you walk there without even having to open your mouth. In a lot of these cases. No, I, I yeah, no, I, I think that that's actually really good advice. But but I'm curious though, how, is do you have any thoughts on how to get and inspire younger people, um, especially females, to actually get into tech? Because, well, let's be honest here, the first programmer was female, right? Like, and obviously now there's very few females uh, in tech and in computer science and, and are actual programmers there. In my experience, I've only worked with a, a few female developers. I've worked with a ton of female designers, but I, I'm curious, how do we, or what are your thoughts on actually getting young people and young girls interested in actually potentially pursuing a, a career in tech and or programming? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. I think, and I'm part of a lot of this this, this female, you know, driven like women who code, right? Sure. I don't know if you're you, yeah, yeah. but that's a big that's a big you know group out there. And how do I get a young girl to get into tech? It's by by promoting this group, right? by going to, to even high schools and, you know, kind of having this classes, right, in education where even though you don't know that you're good at it, but at least you take it, right, you try it, sure. um, you, you go with it, right, since, since, or even since they're little, you know, one thing we had growing up was our teachers told our parents, she sucks at history, she sucks at literature, she's good at this and this and this, they made us try every single thing, right? You try every single thing you can, you experience every single thing you can. And that's when you're going to know what you're good at, right? What is your what makes you happy? What is easy for you? And you love doing day to day, right? Uh, so this group, like Women Who Code, it's an excellent group. You know, the fact that they post all of this cool stuff that they've created and how and being transparent and kind of coaching this, this young girls and women and taking them under their wings. I mean, that's, those, are, those groups are great. They're great groups to be part of. Sure. All of the networking events, uh, you know, even if it's just a simple happy hour that's out there in your neighborhood or in your town or whatever, wherever you are go to it, you know, open, be open, open on exploring new things and trying out new things. That's how you're going to know you're good at something. And, you know, if you surround yourself around this women that are strong and smart and are taking you under their wings and showing you the ropes and the way, 
and the challenges and coaching you through that. I mean, that's the best experience and the like best advice and exact. Yeah. Find a mentor. That's the best I mean, a way to, you know, be involved in, in, in the tech and also be the best you can be in it. Finding a good, good mentor. And as a matter of fact, I, I've had a really great mentor for the past, you know, eight years who's a very, very successful woman uh, with her multi-million company in the same exact field that I am. And wow. um, yeah, um, I think being, being part of all of these tech groups led by women is a great, great advice for any young girls out there to go and try out and finding that mentor that because, you know, with us women, you know, people always, they'll always say this, Oh, well, she's a woman, you know, she's meant to have a family and stuff. And yes, I, I want to have a family. You know, I'm about to get married on July 14th. Oh, congrats. And awesome. uh, I am going to, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I am going to do that. But you know, the fact that I had it, it and I doubt myself a lot of times sometimes, right? But the fact that I had a mentor who did it all. Sure. She came from, she had the same background that I had and she came from nothing and she made it happen and she has a family and a beautiful daughter and she still keeps on maintaining her multi-million dollar company. We can do anything we want to, right? But sure. the fact that she did that and she was my mentor and coached me through that and I knew about all of these groups from her because that was her comfort. That was her second family for her made me be who I am now and made me be confident and be confident every single day, you know, and people will say, well, don't you get, don't you get scared a lot of times? Like, yeah, you do get scared a lot of times. It's normal. We're humans, right? And women are more sure. emotional at the same time, but guess what? We're also stronger, right? And we also have skills that, you know, a lot of men don't, don't, sure. don't have our skills and we can do the same that they do. And we can do the same. We can even do more than they do. Oh, that's awesome. So I, I'm curious though, how did you find your mentor? So uh, funny. Uh, she she was one of the partners at my at my first first startup okay, uh, that I worked cool. for. And um, you know there were uh, how the question is how her and I became so close. Um, we became very close because she was having some technical issues um okay. right there and then wasn't getting the right support and um i was that person who went way and beyond for her and helped her out and fixed what she needed to get fixed and um uh, she just really appreciated that because in her head she would have done the same thing that i did for her and that's like where if we she really was bonded you, you and... mean like if you guys were in reverse yeah, it, yeah okay i got you Very yeah cool. yeah yeah so she looked at me and She's like, you're my little sister and uh, you were there for me when no one else was. And we just, I call her every week and then talk to her about every single thing that's going on, even personal and work, business and all of that. And it's great. It's great to have someone like that. It's great to have another perspective. It's great to be told, no, it's wrong when you think it's so right, but yet it's not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but, because it's, but from somebody, it and it was the wrong choice to do. But the nice thing is, is like when you hear that from somebody you trust, because it's really easy to get somebody to tell you, no, that's a stupid idea, right? But when you actually yeah. hear good or bad feedback from somebody you truly trust that you know has your best interests at heart by telling you that's not a good idea, or yeah, I think that is a good idea, or somewhere in between, right? Yes, I, I, I agree with you 100%. And, you know, those people are, are hard, to, hard to find yeah. sometimes, but they're out there. And this is the advice to young women entrepreneurial and in the, in the tech industry. Go out there, find those people for you, because what two minds is better than one at the end of the day. Sure. Women working together, it's so much powerful and stronger than one on their own. Sure. How, um, what are your thoughts on getting mentored by a, a male? Because obviously there's a lot more in tech just by how things are. What What's your thoughts on that? Like having a woman getting mentored by, by a man? Um, I, I actually do have another male mentor. Okay, very cool. Um, and yeah, so I do, I do have both. 
um, I actually have two male mentors, as a matter of fact, my dad and then my, my other cool. partner. And um, I really, I, what I love about it is that the, the same view, well, so if, if you have a problem, yeah. the way a male approaches it versus a female approaches it is very different. Sure. And to me, at the end of the day, when you have all of these different opinions, it helps you. It helps you understand better and make decisions better, right? Sure. Because you know, if you look at some of these, you know, the, in this, depending on the situation or the problem, like women can have the kind of the same approach, right, to things. Sometimes, not all the time, right? Sure. But then you look at the man, and then the man is completely different, right? Yeah. And combining those two together gets you something that I think it's unique. Uh, it's, it's, it's a unique solution to your problem. Um, because again, like I said, people, many different people will have different opinions than females and males have very different opinions sometimes, but also the same, very, you know, a lot of times. So having that variety and diversity on the way of looking at this problem and, uh, you know, approaching the solutions, um, uh, it's extremely beneficial, um, it's sure. just it's just diverse. It's innovative. Um, it's future looking. A lot of times, um, I think it's um, I mean it's it, it's unique in its own word. And to me, um, with my product, I want a unique product. Sure. Just like I want I want a unique solution to problems. No, that that makes total sense. And I, I think the other thing too is the more opinions you get from people that are different than you in whatever matter that is, the better feedback you'll potentially get, especially if you're not the target market that you're building a product for. Like I always exactly. use, like, I always use this simple analogy and it sounds like you're going to agree with me. It's like if you're building something for nurses and you're not a nurse and you don't like the product, but the nurses do, that's a successful product. You don't have to like something exactly. that's not for you. Exactly. And this goes back to what I said earlier about, I want to build the product. So the, the, the customer or the, the audience builds the product, right? right. I'm not the one building the product for them. They're building the product for themselves. Smart. Yeah, smart. And that's where the key is because, and that's what the biggest mistake a lot of these big companies do is they don't look at that. I mean, tell me how many of those consultants go and sit down with the person in accounting who does account receivables and account payable. Right. Like they understand the process overall and they have their plug and play, you know, solutions, but that's it. They don't actually know all the details behind their day-to-day -day jobs and all the issues and the problems. They don't know that. You know, they don't, and I mean, most of these people don't even get, the chance to get to know the, them right right and then and, and come up with something that's unique like you said right it's 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 made for them it helps them out it makes their life easier better it gives them more them more time during their day-to-day -day job no yeah no I, you're 100 percent right so uh, we're kind of coming to the end but i want any of your other final thoughts on kind of being a successful woman in technology do you have anything else that you want to maybe either tell people or tell your younger self or younger girls or or, or anything um be be confident be passionate love what you do and be respectful diverse and innovative on every decision you make be open to opinions even though sometimes you will hate them and they will offend you and all that but at the end of the day if you are open passionate love listen put your heart into everything you do you innovative and diverse the solutions you provide in the industry will be i mean one of a hell of a solution that everyone will love make People near you happy, and the faraway ones will follow you. Very cool. And that's by putting every single thing that I said earlier into everything you do. And another advice that I'll sure. give to, to the young ladies out there is 
read, read, read. Okay. Get up every day and read. Um, learn Books something or blogs new or, both? or many books blogs whatever it is that you want to read okay just open a book and read whatever listen to podcasts listen to people who are smarter than you keep yourself surrounded with positive people that lift you up with people who know more than you with people who challenge you if you don't feel challenged day to day then there's something you're not doing right easy it's boring so if it's easy enough and you're just there then you know maybe you shouldn't <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't just keep going at it. Um, if it's not challenging, it's not it's not good enough. No, I, I think that's actually really good advice. But we're kind of coming to the end of the show, so how about we close with mentioning where people can get more information about yourself, G7, and any other links you want to mention? Yeah, so check us out um, at you know, www.g7techservices.com. Um, you can also Google for us. Uh, we have some great reviews on there, um, awesome. which I'm very excited about. Um, we're on Instagram as G7 um, Tech, uh, LinkedIn, um, as well as Facebook. And uh, my name is Odetta Pine, and you can, you know, add me in any, any social media group that um, you guys would like to. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time in your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you, and have a good rest of your day. You too, Kevin. Nice Thank meeting you. you. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.